Today I want to focus um, on networking. This is a networking group, right? And so you all know um, probably more than most the value of, um, of networking. And I'm here to tell you that the majority of my career um, and the positions that I've secured have been as a result of networking. Um, not because I was the smartest candidate or the most experienced candidate, but because I perhaps was the candidate that cultivated the most relationships, and um, and that's been a strength of mine, and I've seen that over the years. I didn't always know how to do it well, and I still, um, certain aspects of networking, I'm sure we all um, prefer certain aspects of networking over or others, but in the most um, simple um, description for me, um, networking is not necessarily what it conjures up in most people's minds. You say networking and people think about um, going to an event and um, mixing and mingling and talking with people that you don't know. Um, and that is certainly a part of it and I encourage you to do that, um, to force yourself out of your comfort zone, to go to those events, to rub elbows with people you don't know, to introduce yourself. But the type of networking that I would strongly encourage you to consider engaging in is listening. Networking is not just about you talking at people, letting them know who you are, what your major is, what you want to do, but if you're a really good listener and you tune into what people are telling you, it makes you very valuable. And being valuable in the world of networking is really what it's all about. Um, asking questions finding out from people what they're all about and being a good rememberer, listening and then remembering because ultimately those relationships are all going to come back in one way or another and it's the people that remember. I'm always incredibly impressed and I'm not very good at this myself. I'm, I don't have a great memory. But when the people um, that you come back six months later and they say, how's your son's arm? I, I remember you mentioned he was in a... Um, cast last time we talked. I am always blown away by that, that people remember. They tuned in, they listened, they heard, and they remembered. That is enormously valuable in the world of networking. So um, please make sure that in addition to being a good talker, you're also a very good listener. Um, because making simple connections with people um, is, is really what it's all, all about. Um, I also encourage you to be useful. If you gather that information about someone, or um, whether it be personal or professional, um, make yourself useful. You all may think that you're the users of the network. You're all going to go out and you're going to try to get a job. And you're going to be approaching people and finding out who knows who. You are also part of the network. You can be very useful to me. You can be useful to each other. Um, and you are a contributor to the network. So don't always see yourself as um, just a user or, you know, a suck on the network. You're also um, giving a lot into the network, and it may be in ways that you um, don't necessarily initially recognize. Um, so, so make sure that you find ways to follow up, um, to, if you mention something in conversation, I just mentioned something to Greg about... Um, getting him in contact with a person at the Department of Resource and Economic Development. Now, if I'm a good networker, I'm going to remember to get back to my office and shoot him a quick email with that contact information before he has to prompt me to do it. Based on Greg and my email correspondence, he probably doesn't have much reliability on me doing that, but I'm going to prove to him that I can, I can follow through. Um, so if you, if, you may, if you suggest something, if you um, mention something to somebody, it can be very minimal. Um, try to be proactive. Try to think, oh, you know what, I'm going to follow up with them and I'm going to let them know what that phone number is, what that email is, what that, um, follow through on your promises. Um, and also keep in touch. And these are all things that I'm sure as, as savvy networkers you already um, have a handle on. Um, but you never know what small little relationship um, might actually come back and serve you um, very, very well. Um, the, the other two things I just want to note, as you're doing these things, um, make sure that you're authentic about it. Um, no one, no one likes, um, you know, it's when, when you know you're being sold or you know that someone's coming on and, um, I don't want to 
bash used car salesman, but <laughs> if you're if you're feeling like someone's coming on strong in a salesy kind of way, I just encourage you to be really authentic in your networking style. You know, be yourself. That will shine through. That will that will make people comfortable with you. So be genuine. Be authentic. Be yourself. Um, don't try to feel, feel like you have to be anyone that you're not, and, and don't try to um, be any more than you are. Just just be be authentic and be yourself. Um, I, I encourage you. I'm going to kind of go along here a little bit and share some stories of networking experiences that um, that I think illustrate some of these things. But please don't hesitate to. I want this to be interactive, and you can chime in, share comments, ask questions. Um, don't hesitate. Don't be shy to do that. Okay. Um, so. One of um, one of the um, things about I, I want to just maybe highlight a few um, examples of uh, relationships that have been pivotal in in my career, and um, I started to work on this last night as I was preparing to come talk to you today, and I even realized what an incredible web um, you build uh, of a network over time. And all the webs of relationships and how they interact and how they come together and how you ultimately, you know, are the are the center of your own network. And um, right now, I feel like I have such a strong network of professional relationships that I'm actually just putting people in touch with each other now. And that's how I can serve the network um, effectively is to start to be a convener of all the folks within um, within my network. Um, I will tell you that. As you um, start to build your own network and as you start to be of use to people and you start to share and listen and talk, that and this is no um, newsflash to any of you, your reputation is absolutely key. Um, you're uh, the commissioner of cultural resources for the state of New Hampshire, Van McLeod. He was on my board um, when I worked for New Hampshire Maine. And I remember there was a saying that he used to say all the time that you're only, it's a, you know, he's a theater guy, so he would say you're only as good as your last performance. And that was crystal clear to me when I um, traveled three hours to Keene to give a presentation to a, a rotary group um, over on the other side of the state. I'm a Seacoast person, so I traveled three hours early morning, gave a presentation to the rotary club out there, drove the three hours back, and was in a um, business function for, at noon time with another completely different group of, of business people. And in that short time and in those entirely different environments, a person that had been in my presentation in Keene had spoken to another person in Concord who had then talked to this person in Portsmouth who I was sitting and having lunch with. And that news had traveled just like that. Now, if that, if that performance had been awful, um, then, you, then, you know, three cities and four different groups just heard about it. So try to be mindful. That doesn't mean you're always going to get it right. I've had my share of awful performances. Um, we all do. But just be mindful of that when you're speaking to people. And it's just like the, you know, now with social networking, I mean, it's been magnified. Now you've got... Uh, the social networking component on top of all of this. So um, be very mindful of your reputation, how you conduct yourself, who you are, being authentic, being genuine, uh, because that it, it ultimately does come down to your reputation. That now that I'm at a new job and I'm only six months in, I'm still building up trust and I'm um, trying to share with this new group of constituents that I um, am worthy and I can be trusted and that I'm um, good for the job. I'm still going through that process. And the more that people from my other constituencies share the word, boy, you know, Molly, Molly's good, she means well, she can do a good job for you, the more those uh, pieces of information come through from those other groups that I've served, the, the faster I can move through that process of building trust. Um, so just, just make sure that... Um, you key in on, on your reputation. A um, couple stories. So when I was at uh, New Hampshire Made, the chairman of my board was a gentleman by the name of Gary Madison. He, um, a ex really exceptional chairman, still to this day keep in very good touch with him. Um, he was essentially uh, responsible for hiring me. And um, 
So obviously had a long time uh, relationship with him. And I was um, vacationing with my husband and kids up in Greensboro, Vermont. And we were visiting my husband's football coach from high school uh, that he's kept in touch with over the years. And we were in Craftsbury, uh, next door to Greensboro. And we were traveling through Greensboro. And we were driving down the road. And I said, hey, there's, that was Gary. That was, that was Gary Madison. So we pull up. And lo and behold, my board chair I happened to bump into in Greensboro, Vermont. He has a family place right there in Greensboro next door to Craftsbury. They know the family that I'm visiting with from Craftsbury, Vermont. Um, so there's that whole connection. And then five years later, um, my family's planning a trip to go down to Washington, D.C. to visit our nation's capital and show my kids uh, that whole scene. And because I had maintained a really positive relationship with this chairman of my board, who I could have very easily lost contact with and, and just moved on, I was able to pick up the phone and call him because I had heard that he had gone to, he had taken a job for the Farm Bureau down in DC doing public policy and advocacy work. And I just wanted to get some advice on maybe how we could navigate some of the locations and maybe, um, you know, take in some of the things. And he said, well, I've got a brownstone right on the hill. We're not going to, my wife and I aren't going to be there. Why don't you guys just stay right there? So our little cheap motel family vacation just turned into staying in a beautiful brownstone right behind the Capitol building um, with direct passes in to see our senators and, and legislators. And that was a result of having maintained a positive connection and good relationship with that, um, that person. And I'm sure that that relationship will continue to pay dividends uh, in the reverse as well. I'm sure I can be um, of service to Gary over the years. In fact, I, I did, I wrote him when he was um, applying for the position of commissioner of the Department of Agriculture, he asked for a re letter of reference from me. So again, two-way street sharing in both directions. So um, there are just millions and millions of stories um, uh, like that. One that I shared this morning um, is sort of an interesting little connect the dots. Um, when I first started in nonprofit work in the 90s, um, my executive director, uh, a woman by the name of Robin Comstock, who is very highly regarded in the state of New Hampshire, she has served as an executive director of many of the chambers of commerce, Portsmouth, Manchester, Dover, um, hired me part-time. I kept in touch. She served as a mentor for me over the years. Um, I got a lot of great advice from her. I called her up anytime I had a question. You know, surround yourself with good, smart people. Make sure that you don't hesitate to to utilize and ask them questions that people like to um, to help you out. In any case, I when I went to go for this position at the Dover Chamber, I called her right up and said, hey, I need some coaching. You've had this job. How can you help me? What can we do? You know, again, I was being the user of the network at that point, but then I was able to pay that back to her in when she gave me a, a – well, she didn't call me, actually. Her son, Ross, called me, who's a recent graduate and was looking for an internship opportunity. So I was able to um, to take Ross on as an intern, um, and and so that kind of came full circle as well. That's not to say that those relationships will automatically get you the job. It won't automatically, um, you know, land you whatever you're looking for. You still have to have the reputation, the skills, the know-how and smarts. But the the power of the network obviously will open up doors and, and facilitate introductions. So. Um, so, so keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to just pause there for a second because I feel like I've been talking at you for a little bit. Um, are there questions or comments or thoughts or things that I hear from any of you folks? Yeah. You talk about the two-way street. Is there times when you feel like, you, you know, what can I possibly do for this person? But actually, is that something you should feel bad about in the end? Or? You know, I used to. Um, and I think as young you know, students going out into the, um, into the work world, you kind of maybe might feel that way initially. But what I've learned is over time, you know, you might be my boss someday. <laughs> so I've learned that um, there, you know, I had an intern, Katie Mack. She was actually, she might have been a part of this group. She was uh, um, active. She just graduated last year from UNH. And, um, and she was, 
you know, quote unquote, using me a lot. You know, can you connect me with this person? Can you um, talk to that person? And I was happy to do that. Well, um, I actually asked Katie the other day, you know, um, some advice. She's a longtime Dover resident. Um, I wanted to get her opinion on things. And, um, she, you know, you are of equal value back. You just don't, you might not see it right away. Um, and it may be years until that person calls back upon you. Um, so, no, I, I don't think um, you need to have, feel badly about that. Um, and even if you happen to um, perhaps use um, the network a little bit more, there's this pay it forward ability too. You might not necessarily um, give that right back to that person, but you're out there helping others as well. So I think, um, I don't think you have to go back about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned um, maintaining the relationships. What are some of the things that you've done to help maintain the relationships if you don't see each other for a while or maybe you only met them one or two times? Yeah. Um, you know, it's hard, and we're all very, very busy, and I, um, I haven't always done it as well as I could, um, but I'm a big fan of the handwritten card. I'm sure you've all heard that time and time again in this um, age of texting and email. And, um, you know, I am I have I had a former employee that actually when I was, again, going through my stuff <coughs> last night, I found a stack of cards this big from that employee that just jotted off a quick note every time, you know, thank you, Molly, for helping me out in this situation. Thank you. She would, uh, and I kept them because I was so incredibly impressed by the fact that she took the time to write a quick handwritten note. So, um that stands out in the world of emails and, and texts, and so I would um, strongly encourage a handwritten note. Um, you know, picking up the phone, too. Um, even if you don't necessarily have a purpose, you know, and, and that's, that's important, is stay connected even when you're not asking for something, so that it, you're not always just uh, picking up the phone when you're looking uh, for something in particular. So um, make an effort to... Um, to touch base um, even on the, the, the moments that you're not. Um, and I think it just goes back to being that good listener. People are always impressed when you remember stuff about them. And so those moments that you might just happen to bump into them, you know, to be able to, um, you know, pull something from recesses of your mind about them is helpful. Again, I, I'm getting, I'm still honing this skill. I, you know, I haven't, uh, I have a long way to go. Um, I always tell people that I have a horrible memory, so I have to really work hard at it. Um, remembering people's names, that's huge. That's really um, hard to do, especially I, I meet a lot of people <laughs> on a daily basis, and um, I, I try my best to, to make sure that I I can remember their name as best I can. So um, a couple ideas might come to me, too, as we go on here. Any other questions or, or thoughts for me? All right, well, don't hesitate um, to ask. I mentioned that I um, that I am teaching a class. I think that I mentioned to this group. No? <laughs> this is my fourth, my fourth presentation this morning. Uh, or we're in the afternoon now. <laughs> um, I'm teaching a, a small class um, uh, in the Thompson School um, for just a, about 15 undergrads as part of their community leadership program. And um, I've never fashioned myself a, a teacher by any means, but that was that came as a result of a relationship. Um, uh, the co-director over at the Community Leadership Program, Kate Hansen. Are any of you familiar with the Community Leadership Program? It, um, it helps um, if you're interested in perhaps pursuing a career in nonprofit work. Um, it, it steers people through the process of preparing for a, non a career in nonprofit. So I'm teaching um, intro to fundraising. And um, that was as a result. Kate Hansen served on a, a committee for me um, many years ago, and um, she and I, you know, just kept in touch over the years and um, would bump into each other at conferences here and there. And lo and behold, a, a teacher was going on sabbatical or, or on leave, and they had a, an opening. And she asked me if I would be willing to teach this class, and I. I thought, oh my gosh, I, you know, I have no idea. I've never taught a class, and I, um, but she, she uh, assured me that I that I could do it, um, and I don't think that that would have been something that she would have been comfortable 
extending to me had she not known me as well as she as she um, did through the years and, and know my reputation and know that um, I was capable of doing that. She even knew I was capable even when I thought that I wasn't um, myself. So um, another, another sort of great um, relationship piece. Um, you know, it, it, it seems like every job that I've ever had, it, it's never been cold. It's never been a see it and go after it. It's There has been a connection. Um, public television, the director of membership there, a uh, member of my board at New Hampshire Maid, Linda Burroughs, used to be at public television. Um, I, I, I didn't have an in, but I got to talk to her about that position prior to, to going into it. And um, the my, I have participated both in Leadership New Hampshire and Leadership Seacoast. Again, would highly recommend leadership programs to you if you can. There's a, there's a bunch of different ones. Dover, the Dover Chamber actually runs. Any uh, people that live in Dover here? No, Do Dover resident. Cool. Um, so what if you watch the Dover website? We run a Citizens Leadership Academy. And it's open to anyone as long as you live within the Dover zip code. And it's a way for people to learn about their community, learn about their government, and also, more importantly, connect with each other. And um, I, 25 people participate per year. And, you know, that 20, those 25 people go through that one-month-long curriculum together, and they graduate as a cohort, and that's 25 relationships that you've got for life. So... Um, my in leadership New Hampshire there's a gentleman that was on that from public television and he was ultimately the the hiring uh, manager for that position that that I took so um, make sure that you you put yourself out there I, my niece right now is going through a job search she just uh, graduated from Lehigh back in May and she her job search and tell me if this is sounding at all familiar um, was behind a computer she was on every company website. She was looking for jobs. You know, unfortunately, a little bit now, um, I know that you're forced into that because companies will route you to their website, and they will route you to go look at our job opportunities online. And it's hard. It's really hard to break through that online presence to show you, the, you know, to get in front of people and let them know the person that you are because that's how they do a lot of their screening. And, and I know maybe I'm telling you something that companies wouldn't want you to do, but I would leverage every opportunity you have to get in front of people, to let them see you, know you, hear you. Um, I just recently went through two job searches myself for positions that I had open at the chamber, and I screened them online. I said, nope, go to this email, don't contact me, don't, you know, because I knew I was going to be inundated with hundreds of resumes and I, I did the typical gave them instructions on what they should do no phone calls no stop-ins the two people I hired <coughs> one young man a UNH grad showed up at the chamber in a full suit with his resume I, he spent maybe one minute with me I, di I didn't have any time for him I had a meeting but I saw him he shook my hand and then I remembered when I put that resume on my desk that's the guy I met. That's the guy who did this. That's, you know, made a few notes on his resume. It was only a minute, but it was a minute that no one else got. So that's not to say that I didn't interview the other qualified candidates that I had received resumes for. I did. Um, but there was just that little bit more of a connection that I had had. He also was the most qualified candidate, and he also did the best on the self-assessment tool that we had everyone take online. And so there was obviously, he was well qualified, and he was the best person for the job, but maybe he also, you know, went above and beyond and, and did that extra little bit. So even though he did what you best and not to do, <laughs> it was good? Yes! Okay. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, it, it was. Um, and that may not always be the case. Use good judgment. Um, be careful. Uh, don't tick anyone off if, uh, if you can avoid it. But, um, yeah, I mean, he, he, didn't, he wasn't intrusive. He didn't tread on my time. He didn't say, can I just sit down? He just, uh, you know, this is who I am. Handshake, wanted to hand this to you directly. Thank you for considering me. And he was on his way. It wasn't like he was pushy or infringing on the time. So, uh, yeah. 
you can't get that face-to-face interaction, do you suggest uh, using tools like LinkedIn to try to get through the door? Yep, um, LinkedIn is is a you know of particular note in the in the network as you know I'm sure how many of you are using LinkedIn now? Yeah, so I mean this is a, so you guys are ahead of the curve. Um, I would say LinkedIn obviously more than Facebook or Twitter or some of the other um, online tools right now is very centered around the networking component and making connections and and leveraging relationships. So. Um, LinkedIn, rather than maybe going directly to the person that you're trying to get to, um, see who's in their circle and see who you have in common in your circle. And so rather than kind of stalk them, which can get a little creepy, because people try, people try to connect with me on LinkedIn all the time, and I'm like, I have no idea who you are. I mean, if, you, if I remembered your name and you were just in my class and I got a LinkedIn invite, I'd say, oh, okay, you know, I, th- that was from the class. And, but... Um, when someone out of the blue that you don't know at all and you have no real connection to, um, that's probably not a LinkedIn request I would accept. But if you can make a connection, so, uh, you know, I just uh, heard from Molly Hodgson Smith at the Dover Chamber, and um, I noticed that she knows you. You know, make, make the connection maybe with some other people within the circle of the person you're trying to get to. And then, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the virtual introduction. I do them all the time. So person A and person B, I think that they could connect. Some good things would happen. I, you know, I, I don't necessarily know what, but these are two people that I know should meet. I will put them both in an email, and I'll say, Sally meet Joe, Joe meet Sally. Sally works for da 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 Joe does blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, I, I think you two would uh, have a lot of common synergy. Look forward to hearing what comes of it. I just All I did was put two people in touch with each other. What comes of it is up to them. Um, and I've seen some wonderful things come out of that. And all I did was take a minute to just virtually connect those two people. So ask for those kind of virtual introductions or, um, you know, within your, within your network. Is there another? Um, you know, even your failures, even your not so good relationships or your, your pitfalls, not every, uh, I, you know, I I would be lying if I stood up here and told you that every relationship I've ever built and connection is just stellar. Um, it's not, you know, you don't have a career spanning 20 years and not have some missteps along the way. Um, you know, make sure that you... Um, handle the failures with um, equal um, professionalism uh, as best you can because that also will be remembered. Um, People don't expect you to be perfect. If you feel like you screwed something up or an interview or you someone gave you that introduction and you blew it or you didn't follow through or whatever it may be, um, own it and uh, and try to just um, have the best ethics you can about moving on and working from it. Don't try to bury it or, you know, be real. I mean, I use the example of uh, Greg and I, we've just met, we met via email and phone. How, how long ago? Setting this up. And I was at an incredibly crazy, crazy busy, I still am, crazy busy time. And I'm trying to start a new job, and I'm teaching a class, and I'm trying to be a mom and a wife, and everything's kind of up in the air, and it's all crazy. And this wonderful man, Greg, calls me and says, hey, can you come to UNH and talk? And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. But, you know, I didn't say no. <laughs> I could have, I suppose. But, but I thought, well, you know, that. and he had to chase me for a little bit and hunt me down, and I wasn't necessarily as um, rapid on the email return as I should have been. But thankfully, he was persistent. And, um, but, you know, I owned it. Like, I, this morning, I said to him, you know what? I'm here. I'm pulling through. You probably thought that it wasn't going to happen, <laughs> but it did. And I, I just, I, I shared that very authentically and very genuinely. And I think when you do that, people know you're real. They know you're human. And, and, and we're all multitasking to a fault. And um, so I just think if you can uh, be as authentic about that process as you can, um, it'll show that you're real deal. Uh, I think I started to mention my niece. I I don't know if I finished up that story, but she was very, um, no, 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 I don't need your help. I don't want, no, 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 I'm going to do this myself. 
And I'm just like, Emily, that's not how it works. You know, that's that's grand if you think you're going to go it alone. But it's not, this is not a handout. This is not charity. This is leveraging relationships. This is people working together. Um, so, you know, don't, don't uh, try to go it alone. Um, you know, even your personal relationships will surprise you. Um, I just, one came up and, and sometimes they surprise you for good and sometimes they surprise you for bad. Um, but I, one month into this position at the Dover Chamber, I was organizing a business open house at a big insurance company and I'm dealing with the woman who uh, was organizing it and uh, I didn't I didn't recognize her or know her, but she said, Molly, Molly Hodgson? You used to, your grandmother was in my church group, blah, 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 blah. And you used to babysit my kids. I didn't remember her or her kids <laughs> or anything. I felt awful. I mean, I, I took care of her children. And I could not remember her. For the, but uh, you're darn sure I did not let on that I didn't. Oh, of course. Right. Sure. I didn't really remember that. <laughs> Um, but you have to kind of, you know, I'm telling you to be genuine and not authentic, but, uh, you know, roll with it until you remember, um, because that one I didn't remember at all, but, um, <laughs> I did a lot of babysitting, so it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like it was my only family. Um, so, um, yeah, so I just, I think, I don't know where we are on time, but I just, I want to, um, just leave you with the fact that, you know, you... You may not always be the most experienced candidate. I mean, right out of school, you may likely not to be. You, you don't have experience yet, and that's hard because you're going to hear it time and time again. I'm sorry, we went with more experienced candidate. Or, gosh, you know, this person had more experience. But, you know, differentiate yourself in whatever way you can. Um, people like, um, I, I like persistence. I like um, initiative. I like um, seeing that, gosh, that person really went the extra mile. They, they showed um, they were clever. They were, they used ingenuity. They were, they were inventive. Um, and so, you know, I think the more that you can um, show that, um, the, the better. And, uh, and don't forget, in all relationship building, um, you know, build the relationship. It's like farming. You know, seeds, plant, you know, use the farming analogy, I'm sure. Um, cultivate the relationship, maintain the relationship, steward the relationship, um, you know, harvest the relationship, um, and then, you know, give back, fertilize um, the relationship. So um, I wish you all the very, very best. And um, now you know me, and if I get 20 LinkedIn requests tomorrow, I'll know why. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.